No, that's exactly how you draw it up. Um, give a lot of credit to uh, Minnesota PJ. It's a good football team. New coming over here. They're at the top of the Big Ten West for a reason. They've won a couple games here in a row and done some good things. But I thought this was a team we matched up well against. I really like it coming into the week. I thought our guys have... You know, put a good week of practice. The bye week, we we kind of turned the page, and it's kind of funny, right? So, like, um, whenever we have people around the program, maybe that aren't around us all the time, uh, scouts that come in, NFL people, uh, visitors, maybe outside administration, they come by and they're like, "Coach, I can't believe the way your guys, uh, you know, go about things, the way they practice," and you kind of just take note of it. But on Wednesday, uh, an NFL guy that I've known for twenty years. Um, he was uh, in the hallway uh, around our guys, in and out of meetings, went out to practice, and he, he grabbed me and he said, hey, I know you don't have the year that you, that you maybe necessarily want. He goes, but I can just tell you from every person I talk to, uh, every staffer I work with from watching you guys practice, you have something here that's really good, you know, and I just want you to know that, right? And I, I think this was a great example of that. Um, last night, I literally showed him the Northwestern game. I tried to show him things during the course of the week, and I – I wanted them to know sometimes it doesn't always go as scripted. You just got to be resilient. So I showed them uh, the fourth quarter against Northwestern where they're down 21 points and how they made defensive stops and how their offense made plays and they tied it up at the end and ended up winning it in overtime. But uh, you literally heard our guys talking about that uh, on that last series uh, before John went in and after John went in and just uh, a credible amount of resiliency, I'd say, for two people, John Paddock, um, you know, just to, to put himself in that position. Uh, earlier this year when he got in a game, it was kind of out of control and wasn't a great situation to come into. I said, hey, what we just learned is, you know, when your moment comes, you're going to be that much more prepared. I don't know if it's going to be this week, next week. I said, or, or the last half of the season, your moment's going to come, and I have a pretty good confidence value that you're going to be prepared, and that's exactly what uh, happened there. I didn't think it was going to be fourth and ten uh, uh, backed up uh, on enemy territory with no timeouts and under a minute, but um, that's John to a T. And then Isaiah Williams, for you guys that know him, like, uh, 13 catches, 130 yards. You know, when that ball went on the ground, I think a lot of people would be like, oh, my gosh. I literally didn't say anything to him because I knew he would take care of himself, right? Like, he just continues to impress me on a daily basis, who he is, what he stands for, and what he represents. That that play was created before the day ever started today. He he He's just got that kind of, uh, of ability and pretty awesome to be around. So, with that, I'll open up for questions. Um, you know, I think they've they've learned to overcome some adversity. I think – you know, I've been trying to get a B, and during the bye week, um, I, I kept kind of thinking about how I can get these guys uh, to understand these last four games and where they're at. And, and you know, we really just put an emphasis on, uh, obviously, we're a, a three and five team that's got nine, five, four games in front of us, and all we can do is take advantage of every day. And uh, I showed a play on Wednesday where, in a short yardage situation, one of our players got beat one of our most respected players, and, and the reaction that he had because we talked all week about winning one-on-ones, right? So our three goals today were, uh, first, we had to prepare in no Minnesota. Our second thing is we wanted to run the ball, stop the run, and cover kicks. And our third and our biggest goal was 74 guys that came on this plane. We wanted to win our one-on-ones every play, every day, right? Um, and, you know, for me as a head coach, I was involved in a one-on-one. Uh, our coordinators were involved in one-on-ones. Our players were involved in one-on-ones. And I think, obviously, in the end, we ended up winning. Yeah, so John, uh, if you guys have been around him, he's pretty, pretty, he's pretty much the same guy every day, man. He's a junkie. Uh, obviously, you know his story, his history, his let, you know his his uh, legacy with his his grandfather and his uncle and, and his parents. Uh, uh, his mom and dad have raised you know a really competitive kid. I give him a lot of credit. It hasn't been exactly the way he probably wanted it to be. He came in and competed for the quarterback job. Obviously, we went with Luke, and he just stayed consistent. I think a kid in his position, even last week during bye week. Uh, you know, we started to give Donovan a little bit more of the two reps just because uh, Donovan's really had some great growth here in the last part, and, and uh, John didn't, didn't bat an eye, just took advantage of him, and our locker room really just responded in a way that you can tell he has a big effect in there. If you were there, you saw it, right? Yeah, um, Johnny's a very special player. Um, I had, a, I had a feeling he'd make a big impact as soon as he got in there. I didn't, didn't know. That's classic Johnny Newton, right? Like, he's... I think the part that's funny for me to watch is you see these quarterbacks who they've obviously seen him on film. They know what pressure he is. But when he gets around, that's why the NFL loves him. He he literally has the ability to beat that guard or that tackle, but then he can close, right? Like his burst, his speed to get a quarterback is, is the part that I think the NFL really kind of sees as him being different. For me, uh, I coach that position in the NFL on a, on, on a Super Bowl team that like – 
he he has something that's very unique to a player of that size, and that's the ability to close on the quarterback when he's beat up, beat on a lineman. Well, twofold. Um, the the clock was running. It was a sack, right? So I didn't want any more time to go off. So that's why I killed it. Now, when we called timeout, that prevented the um, uh, uh, timeout due to Luke's injury, right? And and then so the everybody kind of amassed there. And I'll give Geo credit. I'm not saying George is a, a doctor by any means, but he said we get, you got to look at somebody. Look at him. He doesn't look right. Um, and that's when uh, JB went in there and he looked at me and he shook his head. So uh, John went in there and obviously uh, took advantage of the moment. But yeah, that was that was the uh, otherwise the clock would have ran out. I couldn't. I couldn't even get to him. Uh, I, I know. I, all I wanted, Barry, I told him, say, listen, there's still a minute. There's a lot of football. Like like people in those. What I've probably learned in my my years as a head coach, there's a lot of teams that are in that moment that just don't understand how much time. It is on that clock, like a minute and 15, a minute and a half. Uh, I called a timeout on third and four, right? Like technically the, car, the chart said don't call it until it's under three, but I called it with 312, and, and, I, and I, I think you just had to kind of live in the moment um, and make sure that we had every available second to, to get there. Um, you know, when the holding call happened, uh, that was that was a big play. Like I can't wait to see that, like to make sure that holding is there. But um, you just got to kind of handle the moment, and I thought our guys did it. Yeah, I just grabbed him and said that moment was decided before the day. You know, like you, you prepared for this. I couldn't be more pleased and excited like his perseverance. For me as a head coach, one of the things I really love to do is, you know, when you're a positional coach or even a coordinator, you get so fixed in the moment. As a head coach, I really get to stand back and observe and watch, right? And and and, and I know what that kid does every time he comes down the hallway. So every meeting, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have special teams. And so obviously the quarterbacks aren't in special teams. So Barry goes and meets with him in his office, and we pass in the hallway. And usually the first guy down the hallway usually is, is, is John. Like he just – he's the first one out going in the meeting, right? He's usually out in front of everybody. And uh, I usually give him grief about what he's wearing or what he's doing and, and just kind of try to keep his spirits up for exactly this moment. Yeah, you know. So Caden's got really good hands, you know. If you you think like you guys went and watched him play, he played quarterback, right? And he's just got really soft, good hands. He's a good receiving uh, back. I think that play probably shocks some people, but I think when you have a guy of that size, you know, um, they don't know if they can run. But he pulled away from people there, and I mean, I used to get that all the time too for my size. I could really run, but but like John, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Caden, he's he's got a burst. He kind of runs faster. He understands angles. Uh, just really impressed with him overall in this preparation. Reggie uh, practice. I know you guys are going to be mad at me, right? You think I'm, but he practiced Tuesday, didn't Wednesday, did Thursday, and then I'll give him credit. Friday morning, he's like, Coach, I, I don't think I can do it, right? Um, and and I give Reggie a lot of credit because he cares. His care factor is off the charts. So um, I really needed to take another D lineman because if Reggie couldn't go, I wanted to bring another D lineman. So we got if we got cut short with Johnny in the first half, so. Uh, that's why we left Reggie at home, but I think he's hoping he'll be ready for next week. I, I liked our mood at half, right? I really wanted to try to get points on the board there, try to get a kick, you know, but we obviously had to punt it away. And then I thought it was an indicator when they took a knee, right? Like I I, I thought that we were going to have to defend a few plays there. Uh, but I really liked our demeanor at half. I kind of – uh, while our coaches make a corrections, I just kind of go to each each unit and I talk to the offense about, hey, we just got to protect him better, give him a chance. Caden's gonna, you know, uh, make some runs. We got to take advantage of our shots down the field. Defensively, I was emphatic about, you're gonna get to this guy. The pressure's coming. Uh, I didn't say Johnny's gonna be, but I, like I said, hey, we're gonna be able to get to this guy. Uh, I wanted to look out for their tight end was a, a target for him early in the game, right? Whoever uh, Nicario kind of just missed him on a couple plays. I thought Clayton Bush came in and did a hell of a job. Uh, subbing in there as well, like everybody's going to get caught up in John Paddock and a couple Clayton Bush, in my opinion, right, did some things there that helped us win that game in the second half. So, really impressed with him. Yeah. Yeah, you know, during the bye week, I, I looked and I don't really go back and look at the teams we played, but I looked and I saw Kansas beat Oklahoma. I'm like, oh, they must be pretty good, right? And then I, I see Toledo's eight and one or whatever they're at, right? And, and, I realize some of the teams that we've lost to, right? Penn State's lost one game, right? And we were in a one one score game of Penn State. Like, I, I don't want to be four and five, but like, like we have done so much growth in the last three games. I, I just, I'm, I'm excited to get into this week. We got to get healthy. 
Uh, obviously, Indiana had a big win today, and we got to prepare for that moment. But I think our guys feel where they're starting to get, and, and we can only go up. Yeah. Well, I don't think the AD would like the idea if we played all games on the road, right? We need ticket sales. Uh, but but we do – I think our guys, we take the 74-man approach. I always talk to them about, hey, there's 74 guys getting on this plane. They get to have 74 uh, as well. They dress out, but it's really a, a, a push, you know. And I go back when I was with Belichick, he always used to say home field advantage isn't always an advantage, right? And and I was blown away at that, uh, the way it kind of plays out, right? And, and our guys, you know, from the first year when we beat Penn State to – to where we are now, the Maryland game, this game, we do play pretty well on the road, um, and and uh, we just got to learn to play well on on the road and at home. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Aiden. So Aiden, um, uh, in the last game he played in, you know, had a little bit of a, a um, an issue, so he uh, had an MRI, and he uh, does have a, a small meniscal tear, so. He tried to go. He would rest him all by week. He tried to go Monday or Tuesday, and he couldn't. Uh, it's in an area, you know, again, as a running back, he couldn't go. So he'll actually go through surgery, I believe, on Tuesday. Um, so he'll be done. Yeah, it'll be a three- or four-week recovery. Um, and then uh, what was the other part? Luke? Yeah, Luke. I haven't, I haven't gotten an official medical report, but I know he just, he just was, he was off coming off the, off the field. I haven't, I haven't been able to go in there.